how can you have a review that is not working out what's going wrong for, for women? And, you know, a key issue for us in this is why is it that there seems to be a blindness amongst the political establishment to damage that's being done to mothers and women? Well, welcome back, everybody. I am here with Pater Tabin TD, the leader of Aintu, and it's great to speak to you today, Pater. So, Pater, I believe that your party has recently discovered that there have been a significant amount of adverse incidents relating to Ireland's abortion regime since the repeal of the Eighth Amendment, and I'm wondering if you'd want to speak about that a little bit, just for the benefit of our viewers. Yeah, so it's, it's an incredible situation. We in Aintu put in a parliamentary question to the Minister for Health, and we found out that so far since the legislation has been implemented, there's been 103 notifications of adverse incidents relating to uh, the abortion legislation and how it's been rolled out. And these are claims that have been made against the state claims agencies. So in most of these cases, mothers are suing the state because of something that's happened very negatively or very adversely to themselves. Um, and now, it's important to say that we in to believe that all the abortions, the 20,000 abortions that have happened because of the Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael Labour and Sinn Féin legislation, all of those abortions are adverse incidents. You know, that each of those children uh, have had their lives ended by that legislation. Uh, it's been a catastrophic disaster for each of those, for those children. Their whole lives are finished uh, as a result. But even just in the, in the criteria of the legislation, we know that there's 103 cases that have been taken against the state. So on a human level, that's, that's shocking because we know that 103 mothers are, are suffering. Uh, we don't know the full details at all of what those cases are. I know one such case, um, and that's the case of baby Christopher, uh, who uh, was a baby boy uh, who in the National Maternity Hospital ended his life uh, through an abortion. They said that he had a life-limiting condition or a terminal illness. Their diagnosis was wrong, and it wasn't just a mistake. It was a case where they didn't do their job properly at all uh, in their diagnosis. And as a result, that child's life was ended. Their family is completely brokenhearted uh, as a result. So I know for a fact that there are other similar cases that have happened uh, where mothers' uh, babies have been aborted that shouldn't have been even, you know, uh, in, in, uh, under the, the uh, terms of the legislation. Um, and we put a question to the Tarnish to Leo Varadkar in the Dáil yesterday to ascertain why, what was happening. Because as you know, there's a review uh, on the abortion legislation happening at the moment. That review is a skewed review from the outset. Uh, the terms of reference were set because the Minister for Health only spoke to pro-abortion organizations in advance. And instead of tendering, as was promised for the position of chair, the minister went to people who he knew would fulfill the, let's say, pro-abortion uh, objective um, and talks to them to see could they find a, a chair. So we have a skewed process of a review, but I'm worried now that that review won't even analyze each of the 103 adverse incidents that have happened to those mothers. And how can you have a review that is not working out what's going wrong for, for women? Um, and you know, a key issue for us in this is why is it that there seems to be a blindness amongst the political establishment to damage that's being done to mothers and women? We're, we're coming to uh, mothers are, Mother's Day in, 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 a, in a number of, of weeks. And also we have International Women's Day um, next week. And yet the government will be seen to celebrate that. But their legislation is doing damage to women and we, the elected representatives of the country, are not being told uh, what's happening. And it goes back to when that legislation was being implemented. We uh, put forward amendments to secretly find out as much detail around why abortions were happening, what was the outcomes of those abortions, uh, what kind of uh, damage was being done. And we did that so that there could be proper insights and analysis done to make you know, the situation safer and more humane. But unfortunately, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, Labour and Sinn Féin refused all of those amendments at the time. And what they've created is a system that's opaque, that people can't see through, they can't analyse, they can't understand. And therefore, it's much harder to reform and improve. So women's and mothers' health is... 
What do you think is the goal here with the review? Because obviously in an ideal world, the review would be there to show the pros and the cons, what was the effect of this uh, piece of legislation that's been passed. But we've seen, we've had a lot of indication that that's not actually the objective of this and that there's another um, goal at play. What do you think that goal is and what's going on? Yeah, it's, it's funny. You, you, always, you can kind of guess the motivation for a piece of legislation by who's pushing for it. So initially, there was meant to be a five-year review, but all of the pro-abortion campaigners looked for a three-year review. So what they wanted was that legislation would uh, be changed after three years to suit their political agenda. And their political agenda is for the further deregulation of abortion legislation in this country. And uh, what they want to see is for abortions to be made uh, far easier to achieve. Um, and that is the goal of the legislation. And, you know, this was meant to be a review that would be an empirical study that would work out, you know, what is best for, for, for mothers. Uh, and yet, Stephen Donnelly actually stated before the review started what outcomes he wanted from it. So he stated that he wanted to see a situation whereby abortion was more geographically available. Um, so, you know, we, we know that 85% of doctors at the moment are refusing to deliver abortions because most doctors, you know, want to become doctors to save and protect lives. They didn't want to become a doctor to end another uh, human being's lives. So, you know, there isn't a geographical availability for abortion in many parts of the country because, as I said, healthcare workers don't want to deliver it. Um, but he has set the objective of this review for the uh, more widespread delivery of this. Now, this is quite shocking because 20,000 babies have had their, their lives uh, ended by this legislation in the last three years. That's equivalent to roughly 900 classrooms of children who are not with us today directly as a result of Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, Labour's and Sinn Féin's legislation. And here they are now. They've created a, a review with a chair, with the terms of reference that are all pointing in the same direction. And that's to see more abortions happen uh, in this country. Um, so we in AIM2 are doing our best to fight against that. We've, we're trying to highlight the injustices uh, where we can. And a number of issues have happened just in the, in, the, in, in the last while. Students for Life have done really good research into the My Options um, service that's delivered by, by the country. My options, you'd imagine, would be, a, again, an empirical or an objective discussion with a mother on what options were available to her. But they found out that my options didn't have any knowledge about the economic supports or the social welfare supports that are available to mothers to help them through this difficult time in their lives, which is incredible because during the Eighth Amendment um, uh, Committee, we found that 80% of abortions happen for socioeconomic reasons. Yet when a mother rings up uh, my options and asks, well, what socioeconomic supports might be available to me if I want to have this child, the person at the other end will say, I don't know, which is an incredible situation. And secondly, we found out that in, in most cases, even when a mother hadn't decided at all to, to proceed with an abortion, the my options service was referring that mother to an abortion doctor, not to one of the 85% of the doctors uh, who, you know, want to help both mother and child, but only to the doctors uh, who have an objective to deliver uh, abortion uh, around the country. So that's, that's an incredible piece of work that's happened there. Another element that's happened, as you probably know as well, is that in Britain, they have realized that these so-called, what I call Skype abortions, these are where a doctor never meets the, the mother, uh, never diagnoses uh, the mother, uh, provides for an abortion pill and that abortion pill is delivered um, to uh, the, the mother without the doctor having any engagement uh, with the, uh, the mother. And that can lead to disastrous consequences for health uh, and actually can lead to, to death. Um, yet that's still happening here in Ireland. And the HSE admitted in previous questions, uh, in, in parliamentary questions, that they based a lot of their decisions and information that was coming from England. And now England have shut this down uh, and the Irish government is still continuing with it. That's uh, absolutely remarkable. And thank you so much, Pat, for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.